Hey everybody, welcome to class today. So this is the first class in our inversion journey series. So today we're going to be working a lot on kind of finding the midline and a lot of the strength that it takes to actually get upside down. If you like these classes, please remember to like and subscribe and head over to my Instagram or to my blog page and feel free to leave me a message. We're going to start today lying on our backs in Shavasana. So start by taking a few nice deep breaths in Shavasana, feeling the entire back body expand on the mat. Feeling the rise and fall of the belly. And then come into a shift, there, come into a stiff shavasana. So as if you're standing on the floor, start to really activate through the legs, toes point up towards the ceiling. And then start to loop the shoulders onto the back. So you're not jamming them together. You're just broadening through the collarbones and the palms turn up. And then keeping this, bring the attention to the gap in between your lower back and the mat so your spine has a natural curve here we want to maintain that but we don't want to over arch so think about lengthening the sacrum or the flat bit of the lower spine towards the toes and lengthening the back ribs up towards the top of the mat and that curve will flatten out a little bit you still want to have a little bit of space between your spine and the mat but now you should feel a connection between your frontal ribs and your frontal hip points. Keep this, keep active through the legs, and then as you inhale, start to float the arms up towards the sky or the ceiling and have them resting directly above your shoulders. As you inhale, actively reach the hands towards the ceiling, feeling the shoulder blades wrapping around the rib cage. And then as you exhale, slowly, with control, release the arm bones back into the shoulders, feeling the shoulder blades come back onto the floor. And take a few more like that. So you're keeping the elbows straight and you're just protracting and retracting the shoulder girdle. Beautiful. And now find a neutral position with the shoulders. Reactivate through the legs if you lost that. Take an inhale here. And then as you exhale, continue lengthening through that lower sacrum as you reach the arms up and overhead. Only go so far that you can keep the connection of the lower ribs, the back ribs, to the mat. And then relax the space between the ears and the shoulders. Take two more breaths. And then as you exhale, think of reaching towards the top of your mat more, lengthening, 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 as you lengthen through the feet, gaining as much length through the body as you can. And then exhale, start to float the hands back up towards the ceiling, feeling the lower belly engage. And then bring the hands to rest down by the body. On an inhale, float the left leg up to tabletop and then the right leg up to tabletop. So the knees are directly over the hips and the shins are parallel to the floor. Again, bring your attention to the lower back. If you're tilted all the way onto your tailbone, you're going to be overarching through the lower back. But you don't want to flatten your spine. You should have a small arch between the floor and the ribs. And I want you to think of the thigh bones just sinking in to the hip joints. So already you should be feeling the lower abdominals start to fire just by holding this. Inhale, once again, float the hands up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, start to reach them up and overhead. So we're moving kind of slow to start with. But if you do this properly, it's actually really hard 
to keep your body from twisting from side to side and to keep all the points engaged. Gently lengthen through the back of the neck. Keep the lower back ribs on the mat. Take an inhale. Reach further towards the front of the room. And then as you exhale from the pit of the belly, from the lats, start to draw the arms back up towards the ceiling. So the lats are at the side of your body, these big muscles down the sides of your shoulders. So those in conjunction with your lower belly are going to help you to stabilize here. Keep the arms up towards the ceiling, take an inhale, and then as you exhale, changing nothing except the position of the hip, tap the right toes down to the floor. So the knee stays at its 90 degree angle, and then inhale it back above the hip. Exhale, tap the left foot down. Exhale to tabletop, and take a few more of these. Paying attention to what happens in your pelvis. Does one side lift or rotate? Do you overarch through your lower back? Only come down as far as you can control the movement slowly. You might already have a bit of a shake going on. One more on each side. And then exhale, just bend the knees in towards the chest. Give it a little bit of a rock from side to side. And then bring it back to your tabletop, knees directly over hips. Think of as if you're pulling on a tight pair of jeans, that lower belly gently draws down and that will help you to engage and lengthen through the lower spine. Take the arms up towards the ceiling, take an inhale. And this time as you exhale, you're going to take the right arm overhead and the left toes to the floor. Inhale it back to center. And then exhale, left arm, right leg. Inhale to center. And now pay attention to what your body's doing. If when you move the right arm and the left leg, you over arch or you start to hike up through the right hip or twist the pelvis, Make the movement smaller so that nothing changes in your body except the movement of the hip and the shoulder joint. So these subtle movements can be frustrating because they're hard. It's hard to do these movements. It's hard to tune into the body. And it's also hard to move slow. We always want to move fast want to do big, powerful movements, but those big, powerful movements can cause us injury if we don't have the calmness and the control in the small muscles to allow us to do them. Do one more on each side, make yourself even. And then hug the knees in towards the chest. Give it a little bit of a rock from side to side. And then roll over the shins or rock and roll the length of the spine a few times first. My bad. And then roll over the shins, making your way onto all fours. Wrists are underneath the shoulders. Knees are underneath the hips. And just like you did on your back, you're going to keep the elbows straight. Think of pressing the floor away as you feel the shoulder blades wrap around the shoulder, uh, wrap around the rib cage, protraction, and then start to sink the arm bones into the shoulder girdle, retraction. So nothing changes in your spine. It's just the shoulder girdle that's moving. So when you get into your handstands, especially your shoulder girdle is what is going to keep you there. It is so, so important to be strong through the shoulders to avoid injury but also to be able to hold your inversion for a longer period of time and then find a neutral position here ground down through the left hand inhale sweep the right arm forward and then exhale take the left toes to the floor 
Feel the evenness between all five toes and the evenness in through the pelvis. Keep this as you float the left hip, uh, sorry, the left leg to the height of the hip. If the left hip drops when you do that, fire through the right glute to lift the left hip in line with the right. Take another breath here. And then as you exhale, you're going to sweep the right arm to the right, left leg to the left. Keep that evenness in the pelvis. Inhale to center. Two more. Exhale to the side. Inhale, center. Exhale to the side. Inhale, center. Exhale, bring it back down. Whew. Inhale, sweep the left arm forward. Exhale, start by taking all five toes down to the floor, even off through the pelvis. And then inhale, lift the right leg to the height of the right hip. You can always feel for your pelvis, see if that right side is dropping, and if it is, lift it up. Take an inhale here to lengthen. Exhale, keeping the evenness in the pelvis and the shoulder girdle. Sweep the left arm to the left, right leg to the right. Inhale, neutral. Exhale. Inhale. One more. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Bring it down. We'll take a couple of rounds of cat-cow. Inhale, peel the sternum forward. Arch the tailbone. And then exhale, articulating through every part of the spine. Press the shoulders away from the mat. Round it out. Inhale. Think of that retraction in the shoulder girdle. Reach the sternum forward. Arch the lower back. Exhale. Protract the shoulders around the spine. Scoop the belly. Take two more at your own pace. And come back to neutral. Plant the hands directly underneath the shoulders. Palms are wide. Step the left leg back. And then step the right leg back. So we're once more finding that midline. Even grounding through both feet and both hands. Gently reach the sternum forward as you lengthen through that lower sacrum, lower ribs. And then keeping everything just the same, drop the left knee if you need to. You're just going to float the right leg to the height of the hip. The toes keep pointing down. So try not to crank the right hip towards the ceiling. And then set the right foot down. Left the, lift the left leg to the height of the hip. Strongly engage through the right leg. And the gaze is at the top of the mat. Exhale the left leg down and then take the hips back to downward facing dog. We'll take a couple of plank waves here. So inhale, articulate the spine forward into plank. And then exhale, leading with the hips, downward dog. A few more like that. And as you come forward into plank, I want you to again draw your attention to the lats, those big muscles on the side body underneath the shoulders and engage them to draw you forward. It's gonna help you a lot in your handstands and handstand transitions. And then we'll meet in plank. Take the right elbow down where the right wrist was, take the left elbow down and come into forearm plank. So the same principles apply here. You can drop the knees if you need to. Otherwise, you're sending long through the tailbone and through the chest. Gaze is down. It's a good strengthener for um, a forearm stand. And then just like we did in plank, keeping the torso and the hips even, float the right leg to the height of the hip. 
and then set it down and then float the left leg. And then set it down and then just sink the hips down, coming into Sphinx Pose. Elbows are underneath the shoulders, palms are grounded. And as you inhale, you're going to draw the elbows back as if they're glued to the mat. And then allow the sternum to shine through the gateway of the arms. Bringing the extension into the upper spine, strongly grounding through the legs, lengthening through the tailbone. And then exhale, release. Come onto the belly, bring the hands to a cactus position. And then as you inhale with the forehead, forehead to the floor, you're just going to float the arms up to the height of the shoulders. So try and keep the shoulder heads from rolling forward. Think of sliding the shoulders onto the back. And then as if your arms are resting on a plane of glass, you're going to inhale, sweep the arms above you, and then exhale, draw them back to the cactus position. Three more just like that. And then pay attention to what's happening in your pelvis here. If you're gripping through your lower back or overarching, try and send length into the lower back and bring the strength into the shoulders and the upper back. And then bring the hands down. Take the hands out in front of you. Forehead resting once again to the floor. And then as you inhale, you're going to hover the right arm and the left leg. So think of a game of tug of war. They're pulling apart from each other. And then exhale, set it down. Float the left arm and the right leg. And then set it down. And then keep going. Again, bringing attention to what your pelvis is doing. Is it rocking from side to side? When you try to lift your leg, are you just gripping through the lower back? Try and get the movement to come from your glute and your hamstring. So working opposite sides of the body, your body works in what we call muscle slings. So if you think of your right shoulder muscles, they're going to work with your left hip muscles and vice versa. This is what helps to keep the balance in the body when you're, you know, doing things like walking or running. Handstand, headstand, forearm stand. It's just a little bit more of a hectic variation of that. Take one more to even yourself off. And then bring the hands underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes, inhale, lift the knees, exhale, plank pose. Drop the knees if you need to, float the right leg off, and then tent up onto the left fingertips. This might be where you stay, keeping nice and even. Otherwise, you might be able to start to float the left arm behind you. The tendency is going to want to be to really drop the left, sorry, the right hip and rotate to the left. As much as you can, try and keep the pelvis even. And then if this is quite accessible to you, you might reach the left arm forward. And then exhale, bring it all back down. Take a breath. That's really hard to do when you're talking. And bring it back to plank. Take the feet a little bit wider than what you normally would for plank. Shift the weight to the left hand and float. Oh, sorry. F sorry. Shift the weight to the right. Lift the left foot. There we go. Got there in the end. And then stay here. Prop up onto the right fingertips. If this is where you can stay and you stay even, great. Maybe float the right arm by the right thigh. Or maybe float the right arm in front of you, keeping the pelvis and the shoulder girdle as even as you can. And then exhale, bring it all down. Send it back for a brief child's pose. Take a breath.
and then snake it forward to forearm plank. We're going to do the same thing on our forearms. Opposite hand to opposite elbow. Send the feet back. Take an inhale here. Exhale, float the left leg. And then maybe, once again, propping up onto the right fingertips. Maybe the right fingertips reach in front. Maybe you float the right hand back by the right hip. And maybe you reach it out in front. So wherever you at, open up to your truth levels. So for me, I need to have my hand propped by the hip, and that's fine. And slowly release. Take a brief sphinx pose. Stretch out the hip flexors. Stretch out the chest. And then tuck under the toes, bring it back into your forearm plank. Hover the left foot. Maybe take the left hand out in front of you, propping onto the fingertips. Maybe it reaches behind you. Maybe it props near the hip. Wherever you need to be to get the chest and the hips even. And then slowly lower down. This time we're going to take seal pose. So reach the hands out in front of you nice and long. And then inhale as if you were coming into sphinx with the arms straight. If this is too much, you can always come back into sphinx. The elbows are lifted off the floor here. One more. And then exhale it down to the floor. And we're going to take a wide-armed cobra. So tent the fingertips, elbows face up towards the ceiling. Plant down through the feet. Inhale, peel up. Exhale, drop the right shoulder towards the floor, twisting towards the left, opening up through that right shoulder. Inhale through center, exhale, take it over to the other side. Inhale through center, exhale, roll it down. Come back into Sphinx pose for an inhale, exhale, forearm plank, and then start to walk the feet forward into dolphin pose. Reaching the chest back towards the thighs. And then keeping an even grounding through the forearms here. Inhale, reach the right leg back and up. And then as you exhale, gently draw back through the left hip. You should be able to send your left heel a little bit lower. And the pelvis should feel more even. Inhale here. Exhale, take the right foot down, and then inhale, sweep the left leg up, gently drawing back through the right hip. Exhale, set the left leg down, set the knees down, come up into a tabletop position, set the hands underneath the wrists, step it back one leg at a time, plank pose. And then maybe play around with coming up onto the right fingertips. And then maybe you can prop up onto the left fingertips. Only if this is okay on the wrists. And then from here, just like we did at the start, the torso stays the same. Press the floor away and then start to sink into the shoulders. Press it away, sink into the shoulders. Two more. Keep that nice, long, straight line of the torso. The only thing moving is the shoulder blades. And then one palm down, other palm down. Downward facing dog. Bring the feet a little bit closer towards each other. Inhale, sweep that right leg up. Exhale, draw back through the left hip. Draw down through the right shoulder to even off the shoulders and the hips. 
inhale here, exhale, round it out, knee to nose, shift forward into plank, inhale, take it back, exhale, right knee, right elbow, inhale, take it back, exhale, right knee, left elbow, inhale, three-legged dog, exhale, down dog, Sweep the left leg up, inhale, exhale, draw the right hip back, draw the left shoulder down. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, round knee to nose, inhale it back, exhale, left knee, left elbow, inhale it back, exhale, right knee. Uh, left knee, right elbow, sorry. Inhale it back. Exhale, set it down. Look between the hands. Start to bend the elbows. Send the chest towards the floor. Inhale, up dog. And then exhale, take it back to child's pose. And take a nice few nice deep breaths here in child's pose. And start to walk the hands back up towards you. Roll over the ankles and come into Dandasana. Send the feet out in front of you. Really active through the feet. The feet can be hips distance apart. Stack the shoulders over the hips, head over the shoulders, and then stay here with the hands down by the side, opening up the shoulders for an inhale. And then as you exhale, just like you did on the back, think of lengthening the back body, drawing those frontal, um, what are these things called? Frontal ribs in towards each other as you lengthen through the whole torso. So you're not drawing them in so much that you crunch down. You want to think of lengthening equally through both sides, front and back of your torso. Arms don't have to reach by the ears. If that causes you to overarch the spine, bring them in front of the ears. That's fine. And then exhale, plant the hands down. So you're going to plant the hands on the fingertips just by the knees. Point the toes. Inhale, float the right leg up. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, float the left leg up. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, float both feet. Exhale. Inhale, right. Exhale. Inhale, left. Exhale. Inhale, both. Exhale. One more time for each set. And then set it down. Beautiful. From here we're going to come into a wide-legged forward fold. So set yourself up nice and wide on the mat. And start by bringing the hands in front of you. Pointing the toes. And you might have to walk your feet in, depending on the strength of your hip flexors. And the same thing that we just did, you're going to inhale, hover the right heel, set it down, hover the left heel, set it down. And you can see that my hip flex is not very strong, so my feet are slowly making their way closer to each other. Maybe you have the strength to lift both. Maybe you can plant the hands and lift the bum off as well. A few more. And then set the feet down wide, toes point up towards the ceiling. And just either stay with the hands behind your back, setting yourself up nice and tall, or start to crawl the body forward. And walking yourself back in. We're going to finish today with a simple cross-legged twist so come into Sukhasana left shin in front of the right inhale sweep the arms up and overhead 
exhale, twist left hand to right knee. Inhales, take you taller. Exhales, turn you deeper. Then come back to centre, switch out the cross of your legs. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Exhale, right hand, left, uh, left knee. Inhales, take you longer. Exhales, take you deeper. Inhale, sweep the hands up and overhead. Exhale, bring the hands through heart center. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Feel free to stay here in a seated meditation or make your way to Shavasana or on to another class if that's where you're headed. Today, as you go forward, may you have strength in your mind Conviction in your words, encourage in your heart. Namaste.